Hi everybody, it's Mario here. Welcome to a new tutorial. In today's session, we're gonna be continuing with our Pong game. In this session, we're gonna be looking at the AI, how to make it smarter, and that should make our game more interesting. Let's have a look and see what we're gonna be building. This is the game that we're gonna finish with by the time we're done with our session today. So the main thing that we worked on is just the AI. So once either the player or the opponent hits the ball, there's a moment where the, the opponent will kind of think and try and figure out where the ball is going. And you can see on the red line, um, that's the trajectory that the opponent is following. So wherever that line ends, uh, that's the point that they're gonna be moving to. So they're not gonna be confused by kind of bounces. And that kind of emulates what a person would do. So as soon as the ball struck, there's a moment where you're kind of thinking about it and then you're gonna to go to a spot where you think it's going to land. So um, that's what we're gonna be building today. Let's get stuck into some code. This is the code that we ended up with at the end of the last session. Before we get started with our AI, there's a little quick fix that I want to perform. And it's to do with the window size and hard-coded dimensions. So if we have a look at our paddle class here, depending on whether we're creating the paddle for the player or the opponent, we set the X value, so where they position themselves horizontally, as 40 or 600. And 600 was chosen because by default, the window size is 640. And so uh, it'll be 40 from the edge, just like the player. The problem we have though, is if we change the size, so if we say width, let's say 1024, we'll set our height as 768. Okay, so when I run the game, the one thing you're gonna notice is just where the opponent is. Uh, and we kind of want them all the way to the right. So I want to be able to change the window value or even perhaps have the user change the size of the window and it not really affect the geometry of the game. So uh, that's what we're going to fix quickly. And we're also going to um, fix it in a way that's going to be useful to us a little bit later on. So I'm going to set the, uh, let's say X offset. And that will be how far we are from the edge of the screen. And so here we're gonna be X offset from the left. And then the, instead of 600, we're gonna get the width of the window. And then we're gonna take away that offset. Uh, and now hopefully when we run our game, uh, X offset, oh, I've just gotta set a value. Uh, cool, so hopefully now when we're in our game, you can see that the opponents um, in the spot that we want, so that's much better. Uh, I just realized we're not actually taking into account the width, so it's slightly off, but um, I don't think that's a big deal. And the benefit now is I should be able to change the window size uh, and it shouldn't affect uh, the game. Cool. Great, all right, so now let's have a look at our AI. So the first thing to note is uh, the opponent's just constantly tracking where the ball is currently. So uh, it never pauses and it's always looking at where the ball currently is, which is not really how a human would play Pong. So the first thing that happens if you look at what my paddle's doing is when the ball struck, there's kind of a moment before you, you're trying to figure out where that's gonna go. So there's a bit of thinking time that we're not really emulating here with the AI. So that's gonna be our first step, adding that thinking time. Once we've done that thinking time, the next thing to do is get the AI to actually follow where the ball's gonna end up and not where it currently is. Um, and that's going to involve kind of drawing out the current path of the ball and then um, telling the AI to go there. So let's get stuck in and do that first step, which is just going to be the thinking time um, and add that pause uh, before the opponent moves. So we're gonna go all the way to the bottom of our program here. And to add in the thinking time, we're gonna to need to record uh, when the ball was last struck. So um, I'm gonna add a new variable here and we're gonna call it uh, last hit frame. And we're gonna set it to zero. And that's gonna record the, the frame number that the ball was last struck. So in Ruby 2D, I can call window.frames and that gives me the current frame number. So starting at zero, 
Each time the game updates, it'll increment that by one, and we run it as 60 frames per second by default. So after one second, the if I call this method, I would get back uh, 60. And the number just keeps on going up and up and up. So to start off with, we will just set this value to be zero, and then we want to record when the ball is struck. So when the player hits the ball, like in this example, we're gonna say last hit frame equals window.frames. And then we're gonna do the same for the opponent. So when the opponent hits the ball, we'll also set this uh, value as well. Now the logic around where the opponent moves is in this trackball method on our player class. So we're gonna go there and we're going to add in this delay that we're gonna uh, create from this last hit frame time. So we're gonna to need to pass that in so that we can use it in our trackball method. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we've got access to this last hit frame. And in this method, we can also check the current frame as well. So let's say that the balls hit pretty early on, let's say a value like 100, and the last hit frame contains the 100 value. And a little bit of time has passed, so um, but not much. So let's say we're 20 frames past that. So we need to figure out at what frame can the opponent start moving. And so we're gonna create a constant here to record the delay that they're gonna have. So I'm gonna call it opponent move delay frames. And I've been doing some testing. I think 30 is a good value. So 30 represents about half a second of delay. Um, that seems like a lot. I think for a human, they might react in a couple of tenths of a second, but in the testing I've done for the moment, it seems to be working pretty well. So we'll add about half a second delay. So we're gonna use this as well. Um, so we've got this as 30 here. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to um, take the last hit frame, we're gonna add this delay to it. In this case, we'd get 130. And then we're gonna check if that's bigger than the frames. And we're only gonna run this logic here if it's actually less than uh, this value. So as the frames ticks up, it'll get to the point where it's bigger than it. And then at that point, we will, uh, we will allow the opponent to move. So uh, we're gonna say, um, if last hit frame plus this, so the 100 plus the 30, if that's less than window.frames, so if we're still waiting, if we've passed it, then um, we can run our logic. Okay. Let's run that and see if it works. Great, so you can see there's a bit of delay. As soon as I hit the ball, we should get the opponent hitting the ball as well. Give him an easy one. Okay, and you can see there's a bit of delay after they hit it as well, which is exactly what we want. So if you have a look at the game now, it seems like it's almost too easy. I'm scoring quite a lot on the opponent, but it's just because we've yet to make them a bit smarter and track the ball correctly. Um, so that's gonna be the next step. So to do that, it's actually gonna be a little bit tricky because we need to figure out where the ball is gonna go. So the first step is we're simply just gonna trace that path out and just draw a line um, that's gonna be where the ball is currently heading. So let's draw that line. Okay, so we're gonna create a new class to track that trajectory. I'm gonna call it ball trajectory. new and then we're going to take the ball in here um, and then when we uh, when someone scores and we create a new ball which is down here we're going to need a new ball trajectory as well okay so let's create this class up top great so to get the trajectory, we need four things from the ball. We need the current position for X and Y, and we need the X and Y velocities for where it's going. At the moment, we don't expose all those things, so we're gonna to go to the ball and add those in. So the X and Y velocity are here, which we can use. Uh, so I'm gonna add those in as attribute readers. 
and we already have a Y middle, so that's the middle point of the ball vertically. We're gonna add one for the X as well. That's gonna be X plus, now we've used height here, uh, but height is actually the size, so it's the same width and height. So I'm just gonna reuse that one. Great, so with these two, um, and these two here, that's the four bits of information we need to calculate that trajectory. Okay, so in our trajectory, we're going to create a method to draw that line. Uh, we're gonna call it draw. Uh, and we're gonna create a new line here. Now, the line class in Ruby 2D needs a few different things, so we need x1 and y1, which will be the starting coordinates, x and y. Uh, we already have those from the ball, so we can say, um, so we can say ball dot uh, x middle. So that's our, sorry, x1, our y1 is ball y middle. Uh, and then we need the finish point. So we're gonna calculate that in a minute, but for the moment, uh, just to illustrate, we'll set it as zero and the white to a zero. So we're gonna set the color to red just so we can see it easy. And lastly, we just need to call this method on the ball trajectory, just down the bottom. So we're gonna call it um, here. So I think we need these to happen first. So I'm gonna call it down here, ball trajectory dot draw. Okay. And let's see if we can visualize that. So you can see we're drawing a line here. The next thing to do is get the end of the line pointing to where it's actually going. So let's see if we can do that. Now the logic that we're gonna use, we're gonna reuse it uh, outside, or well, in the board directory multiple times. Um, and I'll explain why in uh, a little bit. So. The actual values here that we're going to calculate, we're going to put them in a new class. We're going to call that class new coordinates or next coordinates actually. Okay. Okay, and it's going to take the four things that we talked about. So the X, the Y, um, the X velocity and the Y velocity. Just grab these. So we're going to hold on to all of these in our class so we can use them. Okay. And so the next coordinates class, we're gonna calculate the new X. So we're gonna start off with the current X position and to get the, um, to get the end of the line for the moment, we're going to basically say um, times so get the starting X, get the velocity and just times it by a very large number. So later on, we'll figure out what that number is. Uh, for the moment, we'll just times it by a large number. So we're gonna say X plus velocity and then we we'll times it by 9999 for the moment. And then we're gonna do the same with our Y. So I'm just gonna copy and rename that here. Great, so um, those are the new the new endpoints for our line. So we're gonna use these. So I'm gonna create a new instance here of our next coordinates. And we're gonna pass the four things in. So it's gonna need our ball.x middle, ball.y middle. We're gonna need our ball.x velocity and ball.y velocity. Great. And now we can use these methods that we've made here for x2 and y2. So this is going to be next coordinates x, y2 will be next coordinates dot y. And hopefully now when you run it, you should see that the line should be pointing uh, where it's going. So that's really good. So if you look at the ball, we could already get the opponent to look and see where the line's gonna end and then kind of go from there. But there's a couple of problems we have. 
if you have a look at the line, it doesn't always end where the ball's gonna end up because it's bouncing off the, the top and the bottom here. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to figure out if the line is going to bounce off the top or the bottom. And if it is, we're gonna draw a second line. Now, if we wanted to, we could keep on doing this. So if it's gonna bounce multiple times, figure them all out. But I think for this tutorial, just one more line would be uh, fine. And then the other thing we're gonna do as well is if you have a look at the line, when it's going to the ends, so like this, um, it's actually pointing all the way to the edge, which is not where it's gonna be colliding with the paddle. So we wanna get put it um, that 40 pixels uh, inwards, uh, just like our paddles are. So we're going to do those two things. So the first thing to do is actually figure out um, if it's going to bounce off the top um, or if it's going to bounce off the bottom. So let's do that first. So to do that, we need to actually get the real value here. So let's figure out what those will be. So I'm going to make a new method here. So we're going to call it the X length uh, and that's the one we're going to call here. So to work out how long the X component of the line is, there's two different cases. So there's a case when the ball is going to the left and then there's a case when the ball is going to the right. So we determine that by the X velocity. So let's first think about if the ball is going to the right. So if the ball is going to the right, to figure out where the ball will finish, we can take the current X position and we can take the width of the window and take them away from each other. So we have how far the ball needs to travel. And then we can divide that by the X velocity. And just for good measure, we're gonna take away the paddle offset that we um, worked out earlier because we want it to go not all the way to the edge of the window, but um, 40 pixels before that. So I'm gonna get the width of the window here. Uh, and we're gonna take away that 40 pixels. So we get that, and then we're gonna take away the starting position, so wherever X is. Okay, so this is basically how many pixels we have to get to the end of the screen, and then we can divide that by the X velocity. And that will tell us the how long our line will need to be. And this is only true if our, we're going to the right, if our X velocity is greater than zero. If we're going to the left, then it's a little bit easier because we don't really um, have to worry about the width. It's, it's zero is the point that we start at. So if we get the X position and then take away the 40 pixel padding, um, we don't have to take away the width because we're, we're dealing with zero there. So in that case, it's just the current X position, take away that padding and then divide by the velocity. So it'll be um, X position, take paddle offset, and then divide that by the X velocity. Now, the thing to note here is if the X velocity is negative, it'll run this. So this is going to be here a negative value. So we actually want to divide by a positive value. Um, so we want to put a negative here in front. We could have alternatively made this whole thing negative, um, but this will also work fine. The cool thing is the Y, the calculating the Y will actually be the, the same. So we can copy this exactly um, and just change X with Y and width with height. So I'm just gonna do that now. So X with Y and width with height. Uh, when we're going with the Y, we don't have to worry about the offset because we actually wanna collide with the very top. There's no paddle to hit it. So I'm gonna take away this part makes it a bit easier. And I'm also going to take away this part. Um, so our Y is a little bit simpler here. Cool. So let's see if that's going to work. I'm going to put my Y length here. And when we run it, if it's working fine, there's not really going to be much of a visual difference. Um, the one thing is, oh, I can see one of them's not working. We've got something so this one here, that should be pointing to the end. So let's have a look and see what we've... Uh, ah, okay. So we don't actually want to use the X length here and the Y length here. So I've messed that up a little bit. We actually want to calculate both of them and then take whichever one's smaller because we only want to draw the line as soon as it collides with the top. Um, and we don't want the values to kind of go out of the frame, if that makes sense. 
So what we're going to do is for both the X and the Y, we're only going to um, basically multiply it by whichever one is going to be shorter, whichever one's going to collide with something sooner. So I'm going to say Y length min. And that hopefully should fix that behavior we had. Great, that looks a bit better. So you can see when it's going to collide with the paddle, uh, you can see it's pointing a little bit uh, further in. It's not all the way to the edge, which is good because that's where the paddle is actually going to hit it. So that's great. So the next thing to do is um, when it's hitting the top or the bottom, we also want to draw the next line. So we want to draw uh, another line that starts where the, this one ends and then that will um, show us where it collides. Uh, and that means that the opponent can kind of figure out where it's gonna bounce and go, and then go to that point, rather than kind of following where uh, it's initially gonna collide. Because we've made this class, uh, we can reuse it. So that's why we've extracted this out into its own class. Uh, we can reuse that logic um, again here. The way we can figure out if it's collided with the top or the bottom rather than the sides is figuring out which of these two has the um, longer value. So if the um, X length is longer, it means that we've hit the top or the bottom. If the Y length is longer, it means we've hit uh, one of the sides. So I'm gonna make a new method here called hit top or bottom. Uh, and that's essentially what we're gonna check. We're gonna say if the X length is greater than Y length, then we have hit uh, the top or the bottom, whereas if they were the other way around, we would have hit the sides. And we can use that now here. So after we've drawn our line, we can say um, if next coordinates dot hit top or bottom, uh, let's draw a new line. So to draw the new line, we actually need a, a new um, instance of our next coordinates because we're going to need to do a new calculation starting where we finished the last one. So I'm gonna create a new instance. Um, I might, because we're only doing two, I might call it final coordinates, uh, just so we don't get confused. Uh, and then we need those four things, right? The X, the Y, the X velocity, the Y velocity. So the X and the Y are actually um, where this one, uh, this next coordinates has finished off. So I can call the X on the next coordinates and the Y on the next coordinates as well. Now the velocity is the same, so I'm gonna copy these two here, um, but we do need to change one small thing. So when we, um, when we hit the, uh, the top, for example, the Y velocity is reversed. And so if we've struck it already, then we, we do need a negative in front of that, um, just because it's gonna be going the other way around. And now we can use this final coordinates class to create a new line to show where we're going to go. So I'm gonna create a new line. Uh, so the starting point is going to be our um, final, sorry, the starting point will be the next coordinates, x, uh, y1, next coordinates, y. And then x2 and y2 will be the final coordinates. Y2. Okay, and we're gonna make this one red as well. So hopefully what we should see now is we should see when it's gonna bounce, it'll draw the second line and that will show where our opponent's gonna go. Great, so I'm just gonna move this a bit so you can see. So now when we're striking the, uh, the top or the bottom, uh, you can see it's drawing that second line, which is really cool. Great, so the last thing to do now is to make the opponent um, use this line um, as, as the place it's going to uh, move to rather than just the current position of the ball. So let's change that up. So if we go back to our tracking code, so at the moment, the opponent is, um, uh, we're calling this trackball method on our player class, on our, sorry, our player instance here. And um, we're passing in the ball on the last hit frame. So we're gonna modify this slightly. We're gonna pass in this ball trajectory instead, and then um, we're gonna grab the value from that instead. 
So I'm just gonna shuffle these around just a little bit because for this code, we need the ball first. Uh, I don't think it's gonna affect um, this uh, opponent code. Um, so we just need to rearrange them in that order now. And now we'll pass in this uh, ball trajectory uh, here. Let's have a look at that trackball method. So here, instead of getting the ball, we're gonna get the ball trajectory. And um, we, uh, we're gonna call that here. Great, so we're missing this Y middle method on our board trajectory, so we just need to add that. So we'll add it below this draw. And in fact, we're gonna use this draw um, so we're gonna grab whatever line it last through, and then we're gonna use the final um, Y2 uh, as, the, uh, as the coordinate to go to. So it's just gonna be draw.y2. Now, if we draw two lines, this method here, the draw, will return this line object, and that's good because we can use the Y2 on it. But if it hasn't drawn the second line, this method will return nothing because it'll return nil because this method, this if won't run. So what we need to do is we need to say um, if it hasn't hit the top of the bottom, we just need to return this original uh, line that we've got. So I'm gonna put it into a variable first, and we're gonna say if we haven't hit the top of the bottom, then return this original line. Okay, Let's see how we go. So remember, we've got that delay for our opponent. So they're gonna take a second between when the ball's hit, but hopefully, ah, cool, you can see it there. So they're moving into the right spot regardless of where the ball currently is. Um, so that makes them a bit more tricky. So you will probably need to fiddle around with um, a few different values to change the difficulty of the opponent so for example, the delay time that we added before, if you add more of a delay, then it'll be a bit more difficult. And you can see it's actually pretty hard to um, score against the opponent. I have managed to do it like that, but it is a bit tricky. So um, you can play with those uh, values as well as the speeds that we had set originally in the first episode, uh, just to kind of dial in how you want your opponent to be difficulty wise. And the last thing we're gonna do simply is just remove this line just so we don't see it. And to do that, we're just going to pass an argument into this line. So we have the option of uh, setting the opacity and we're gonna set it to zero here and here. So it's still gonna create that object, but you're not going to uh, see it. Uh, and if we wanted to, it might actually be cool if we added, let's say like a flag, like a, a variable that we could change. Um, if we wanted to debug the AI behavior, um, we might want to visualize that line. So. so I think that's gonna be it for this session. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. There'll be some more episodes coming and there's still a bit more to go uh, with our Pong game. Um, as always, the code is uh, at GitHub, the link will be in the description below. And if you have any feature requests or any suggestions, then please leave me a comment. Until next time, thank you very much.